uh, for example if we use the same notation for hours and say math.floor seconds divided by and for hours it's just 60 times 60 because we don't need to go ahead and use this 24 for uh, every day um, if we now go ahead and alert out hours you'll notice that we've got 44 hours. Now obviously we want to keep this within the 24 hours because if we were to say we've got, uh, let's say, let's just to let out days as well. If we were to say that up until the 10th of August 2011, we've got one day and 44 hours, it doesn't make sense because you know there's more hours in a day uh, there's not for, there's not 44 hours in a day or any more than this we need a maximum of 24 hours in a day so what we need to do is make a calculation under days that will uh, correct the amount of seconds in order to display the hours properly and for this we do seconds minus equals which is the same as seconds equals seconds minus uh, so we can do that as well but this is just shorter uh, notation and then we want to say days times 60 times 60 times 24. So now what will happen is the uh, set, this, this value here, uh, according to days, uh, will be subtracted off of the seconds. And then when we go ahead and calculate the hours, it will stick within, uh, the well, it will display the correct value. So we've got 1 hours and 20. So now that we've got 1 hours and 20 from the 10th of August at 12, let's go ahead and change this to 13 and refresh and you can see it's uh, changed to 21 so we now know that this works because we're echoing out or alerting out the days and the hours so we'll not alert out anything else we'll just go ahead and correct each one so now we need to do seconds minus equals uh, and then we need to do the same but for hours so we say hours times 60 times 60 uh, and then we need to work out the uh, sorry not the seconds we've already have that the minutes and the minutes is equal to math dot floor and seconds divided by 60 because we're just doing uh, divided by 60 for the minutes and again uh, we're using seconds which has been updated here after our hours has been calculated uh, and we need to go ahead and do this again so um, let's go ahead and say seconds minus equals um, minutes times 60 so now what we've done is we've retrieved the last value of seconds which we can use. Uh, let's go ahead and just alert all these out again. Um, I did say we weren't going to, but let's say days and a space. And we'll say hours and a space. And then we'll say minutes and a space. And then we'll say seconds. So let's go ahead and refresh. You can see that we've got one day, 21 hours, 11 minutes, and 15 seconds until this date. Let's refresh. Uh, you can see this has changed to, uh, well, the one out, well, the one day, the 21 hours, 11 minutes has changed, but this is now seven seconds. Uh, and you can see that that's just gone to 10 minutes and now 59 seconds. So we know that the values are working, so we can go ahead and actually do something with these, i.e. place them into the span that we created earlier for each corresponding day, hours, minutes and seconds. So because we've used the selector here countdown, inside of our um, plugin we can use this dot something. We've already got this selection up here so we want to just say this underscore cell and we want to say dot find and the first thing we're finding is the days class or any element with the class days and we want to place the text in there days. So now what's happened is it's placed one in there. Uh, because we have one day until this particular time. We've already echoed them out so we, we know what they look like. So what we do is re we repeat this process for each um, one. So we want to go ahead and find hours and we want to say dot text. Sorry, not in there, dot text hours. Again, this selection dot find dot minutes or mins as we called it, dot text minutes and then this selection dot find and we want to go ahead and find seconds and change the text to seconds so now when we refresh the values that we were echoing out earlier have just been placed into um, you know the place on our page using find uh, we found this days element hours minutes and seconds element within this uh, countdown div uh, that we supplied here. So pretty straightforward in terms of just sort of traversing through elements on a page. 
Uh, how, however, the only problem now is I have to keep refreshing in order to uh, keep this value changing. So we want to go ahead and apply uh, an interval. So just underneath here, I'm going to say interval equals set interval interval and in here I'm going to give the name of the function which is count execute and I'm not going to put the brackets because that won't work and we want to execute this every 1000 milliseconds so now on the page this function here which returns all of this data will be executed every second and when we refresh the page you can now see that the time uh, decreases and we've got this just updating itself on the page so quite simple uh, however, we've obviously got a few things we need to take, in, uh, take into account. I want to display leading zeros before this and this here if we've only got one uh, particular character. Uh, I want it to show like it would on, you know, say like a digital clock or something like that. So just up here we want to go ahead and um, change this around and then we'll start to create our callback function.